What's up, everybody? Good afternoon, good night, or late night into the morning. Welcome to the BitLab afternoon stream, doing all the TA. What's going on throughout the day? Where is it going to maybe going overnight? Markets breaking down. What does that mean? Are they really breaking down or are they out of support? There's some conflicting sort of charts we can look at from different analysts because there's never an exact right answer about where to draw a line, why to draw it there, what we're really breaking down when we're doing TA. And this, I want you all to know this as well. When you're doing your own TA, it's, it's an art. It really is. It's kind of like, you know, it's like finger painting when you're a kid, <laughs> really, because you're on a chart, you're drawing lines. And the lines are only drawn based on the arbitrary points that you're selecting. And you get better and better with that based on what you're drawing and how you see price interacting with the levels that you're projecting into the future. And when you're way off consistently, maybe your lines are wrong. Uh, maybe you're looking at the wrong thing. So that's what we want to break down today. We're going to talk about also about the importance, important, shout out to Taylor Rodriguez, importance of taking profits, uh, no matter what trades you're doing, no matter what investments you're doing. Figuring out what your strategy is going to be to pull the money back out of the market. Because if it's doing all this work for you and you never have the ability to enjoy that, the, the, the growing capital that, you're, that, you're, that you have in your portfolio, then what's the point of it all, right? And also, how do you capitalize on making even more in that portfolio if you're not taking advantage of the swings in the market? Now, it's all going to be dependent upon what your own risk management level is, what your exposure tolerance is. You're very stressed when markets are moving all around uh, and, and you're, you know, at price or under price like it is right now. Maybe it's not a good idea for you to be doing swing trading or scalp trading. Maybe you're a position trader, meaning trading over the course of time, looking at larger swings over multiple, many months or uh, even you know, cycle swings from near cycle low to near cycle top. Well, enough talking on my end. Welcome to the show. If this is your first time, I can guarantee it's not going to be your last time. For those of you that watch the morning stream, First off, shout out. Anybody that watched the morning stream, throw a one in chat right now. I see how many morning, morning goers we have here in the evening. Now, uh, in the morning show, I do a blend of the context of what's going on in the market, the news, uh, to some traditional stuff, assets as well as Bitcoin, and breaking down all the things together. In the afternoon show, I really want to focus a little bit more on TA, where the market's at, and where we're going from here. So we're going to be breaking that down. My name's Kelly Kellum. Welcome to the show. All my information is right there at Kelly Kellum. You can find me there. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding that bell. Let's get this going. Diving right in. I'm not showing you my Twitter page. I'm showing you some tweets that I thought were interesting. This is where you can follow me at, though. You can also see my information. Boom, right there. But we can scroll down right here. we got a couple things I want to show. Jordan Lindsay, who you've all seen. Shout out if you watched the Jordan Lindsay uh, interview. Throw, uh, uh, throw something in chat. Uh, uh, if you watched the interview that I did with him, you know, a while back, and then also we did a, another one recently, last week actually, released it on BitBoy and on BitLab. Brilliant trader. But looking at the way he's drawn this chart, this is NASDAQ 100 E-mini futures, and it looks like this is on the edge. Bitcoin has already broken a key level. We're seeing weakness in the traditional asset space as well. Not only is it already rolling over, we have the M formation top, we have a low below this level right here, and we're on a key level of support. Could this cause further downside? Could this cause further downside in the Bitcoin market? Got to pay attention to that. Now, coming out of this, uh, there's something else I want to share. This right here, Bitcoin, net volume, buyer, buy orders, sell orders, filled by takers, and perpetual swaps. So net taker volume shows huge sell-off. Now, remember, I want to see which of you know what I'm talking about because I was breaking all this down yesterday. I gave uh, some, some really good information yesterday regarding the difference between limit orders, market orders, uh, all, you know, basic knowledge we all need to understand. What, 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 is this, what does this tell us? Based on what I taught you all yesterday, what is this telling us when we talk about net taker volume? We have price moving down, and we see the taker volume, which is the downside here. What does that mean? Taker are those that are doing market orders, a.k.a. they're not setting in a limit at which they want the price to be taken at, so they're taking liquidity out of the market. They're taking it out of the order books because they're not putting in a limit order, which puts your order in the order book. 
So this is showing a little bit of a capitulatory sort of environment where there is some fear here, and it's also happening with perpetual swaps. So that's just something we need to note and pay attention to. Uh, another thing I want to show right here, MDX Crypto. We've had him on the channel as well. We have this uptrend that has taken, touched a few times. Now, every, as I said, it's an art form in how we choose to do our lines, where we identify to set different levels. And in this case, I would move this a little bit because this is not touching this line, but it's close enough. But in this, in this case, this is still regionally, basically still in line with where this support level is. So have we even broken it? And on the, another note, what I want you to pay attention to here, which is brilliant, and it's so subtle that most of you may not even notice on this chart what I'm talking about, but it is this right here. It's got a buy here. You move my, I move some things around. There we go. Got a buy right here. Too many things on the, there we go. Got a buy right here. And then another buy, which is after this time frame right here. Why would this person have, who's made millions of dollars in trading, why would he have two different buy orders? Why would he set a buy order here if he thinks it's going here? This is a visual, a visual representation of what it means to be a profitable trader. Why do I say that? Because there is a potentiality that this area holds and the market goes up from here. And if you only have a buy order here, you miss out on this level. At the same time, say you put a buy order in here and it drops further. Well, you're gonna have your risk managed on this, number one, right? You're gonna have a stop loss, you're gonna have, or you're gonna have a longer time frame horizon and not mind that if you buy, if it does drop, because you know if you have another level down here, if you buy, you're averaging this right here. If you have the, let's say you buy one Bitcoin and you buy one Bitcoin, then the average price of these two Bitcoins would be about right here. Halfway, the halfway point, you know, this, these two levels divided by two. Okay, the average, the, add these two up, divide that by two, you get the average, it's right here in the middle. So you're averaging down your average entry. If you have a stop loss and you're taking a small percentage loss, and then you get your buy order filled down here if the price comes down here and you have an even lower average entry. Now it's gonna be a little bit higher because you're gonna lose just a little touch on that uh, loss that you take in the stop loss. But exactly as King Peasant says, ladder, baby. It's called laddering your entries, laddering your exits. So we want this, the bulls want this to bounce. They want it to go up, but you cannot count on a sure thing in any asset market. The only, I'll take that back. The only sure thing you can count on in any asset, uh, trading any asset or investing in any asset is that it will go through cycles. The price action will go through cycles. The volume will go through cycles. The volatility will go through cycles. The money flow will go through cycles. It will just, that's the only thing that's guaranteed in price action and in value and in all these things when you're considering what's happening when you're investing and trading these assets. So coming out of here, uh, just reemphasize, we shared this this morning in case you didn't see it. Uh, short term holder cost basis, we're trickling on this chart. This is probably a little bit delayed because this is chain exposed. Chain exposed is uh, another one of the free on chain data uh, providers. The, the free services you use for on chain don't give you up to the, the date uh, data. So, this, this, uh, the price is obviously already below this. Uh, but if we come over here and look, at Bitcoin price. Look at that. Since this morning. We we're talking this morning. Let's see. Let's go to the one hour. We were talking this morning. We were right here, right before uh right before the market, right, right as we ended, the market dropped. We go down to let's go to the 15 minute. So literally right as we ended, right at 11.30. So our show went off the air. And the market said, I guess Kelly's not here to save us. Right here, 11.30, we went off the air, boom, market dropped. So I'm very happy we can do these afternoon streams because we could talk about things like this. But what did we talk about before we went off the air? We were talking at length. We can come out of this. We can come back into this chart. We talked at length about this. I suggested I had this level here. 
I had the uh, this uh, Fibonacci retracement here that shows that we had a couple different levels we could watch out for. We could watch out for this 0.5 and this level right here, which is this previous high, which is also, if we come all the way across, there's a lot of, a little bit of a bounce there, a little bit of a rejection there. That's what I'm talking about. So you see rejection, or a little bit of rejections here, and then we finally break through it, come down, lose it, come down. We, we have a deviation, but we do bounce at this level, come down, bounce right here with this wick, and then the level's lost. Come back up, reject off of it. So we know this is, a little bit of a, an area we want to pay attention to. And looking at the price action uh, today, we're on the 12 hour. Let's go to the one hour. All right. So this is what we were looking. We we're saying if we lose this level, price action can go quite a bit lower. Where do we say it could go to? Well, we said it could go likely very high hit rate in crypto is coming down towards the golden pocket, which is down here in the 27.5 sort of region. And I talked about the potential. We can even see it on this other chart right here. I thought, I think I deleted all those things, didn't I? No, it's on uh, this chart right here. Uh, yeah, here we go. So I talked about, and I actually moved this this morning before the stream. You'll see if you go back a couple weeks, I was talking about the potential of price action coming down, touching the 382, touching the 0.5, and coming down and grabbing liquidity somewhere on the 618. On the bullish side of this argument, if the price were to come down here, which is working its way down, I had suggested, and I moved this down. I, I, this morning, this, I had this about right here. Uh, and the reason was, it said, is because the, the golden pocket is such a high hit rate spot for Bitcoin and crypto. A lot of times, if you have a little bit more of a bullish leaning, uh, if this is more of a bear trap sell-off, and we're going to have liquidity buying this up and, and moonshotting it, there's a potential of price action to front run the 618 and take a little bit of profits there uh, on the shorts, remember. Take a little bit of profits there and starting to see some sort of interaction front running the 618. The 618 is a little bit lower down. I move that down just because everything's so bearish. In fact, if we look on the daily, look at this on the right, on the dashboard here. Bearish, 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 neutral, bearish, bearish. It was it look like on the 12 hour. Same thing, bearish, bearish, neutral, neutral, bearish, bearish. See that? What does it look like on the eight hour? Same thing, four hour. A little bit of movement on the VWAP. We can tell because the V is uh, green, but why is that? Let's go ahead and turn on the VWAP. VWAP is angled up trying to, it looks like it's trying to, trying to take the zero line, meaning coming back above the zero line, which doesn't look like is going to happen. It actually looks like it's going to get rejected before the zero line. There's selling volume on this momentum. You see these candles are red, uh, this uh, down here on the bottom. Uh, if you can't see where I'm pointing, I'm pointing right here. See these gray and then it turns red. That's because there's a lot of volume on the momentum to the downside. We can also see, uh, we can also see if we look right here, Where's it at? You can also see all these purple candles. Purple candles are high volume candles. These are bearish candles, so they're high volume selling candles. Similarly, we see these teal candles. These are high volume buying candles. What we want to look for right here with these high volume sell candles is if we get something like you see this yellow candle following the uh, teal candle right here. If we really zoom in on this, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. See that yellow candle? This suggests that there's high volume in this buying. This suggests that there's still high, uh, high volume on the buying as well. But even within this candle, essentially, there's a narrative flip from bullish to bearish. So we had a lot of bullish buying, and there was a lot of bullish uh, buying here as well. But all of a sudden, the bears kind of overtook it. So essentially, it's like stopping volume. And then what happens? We get the double top. This breaks down. Now, what we want to look for down here, and it's starting to form right now. We're on the four hour. We got 45 minutes left. You can see here on the right where I have the candle countdown right on this purple line right here. It's purple because the candle's purple. Uh, currently, we have a spinning top. This could suggest, note, I say could. This could suggest we may have a, a small bit of work to do in this region, which is exactly where I was talking about before. The price action somewhat front running uh, and pausing a little bit before, a little ahead of dropping all the way down to the golden pocket, which is down here where the blue, uh, this blue box is. So let's come down. Let's look at some smaller candles. Let's look at the one hour. So in this case, this looks like a little bit like a bear, uh, bear flag. Now we can go all the way down to the wick. 
if we wanted to, again, this is subjective. You can come down here, uh, do a wick like this, boom, option T, bear pennant like that. So if this is a bear pennant, then what we would do is from, from the top of this wick here all the way to the bottom of this candle, uh, go like this. Then this will give us a target continuation down to $27,103. Let's look at this with a little bit more resolution. What does that mean? Smaller time frame, more candles. We'll have candles that fill in all the gaps here on where those wicks came from. So let's go down to the seven minute. Now you see what I mean? Higher resolution. Based on where the wicks were drawn, I drew this pennant and it's lining up exactly perfectly with where price action should be uh, based on the wicks and, and uh, not the price action, the uh, support and resistance. Now in this case, on the seven minute, now, I'm not trading on this because everything's kind of on a hair trigger right now. But we're getting a little bit of green uh, here on the dashboard. We got the, the VWAP angled up and about to break over. It's just barely broken over the zero line. Momentum looks like it's trying to start to round. Volume's down, which is okay because we had a lot of selling volume. Uh, we want, we, we'd like to see a little bit of consolidation here, or a little bit of healthy working its way up. Um, we have the stochastics angled to the upside. RSI is angled to the upside, if you can see what I'm talking about. RSI was angled to the upside, but it's rolling over. Is this in line because we have a little bit of a trend line right here? You see this touch, touch, and at this point right here, it's starting to look like it's trying to reject. This is a seven minute chart though. All we're trying to do is really get the clarity on these candles within this. So let's go back up to, uh, let's go to the one hour candle to give us a decent amount of clarity while still, while still being able to look a little bit more broadly at what's going on in the market. So I want you to notice something, this is selling off. You want this to bounce. You want it to bounce. Why? Because we're all eternal bulls. We want this shit to go up. I don't care what you say. I have a balanced view, but we, let's be honest, we want the markets to go up. Yes, I, I, I sold quite a bit of uh, altcoins a couple weeks ago, and I'd rather this market go up and me miss spots, miss new, uh, new opportunities to add positions lower, because if this, the, the market is so frustrating to trade right now because of everything going on with, you know, the, the, the confusing dynamics of everything going on in the market and global markets and everything. Looking here on the one hour, you see this little relief rally that I was just talking about. We had the wick come down, eat this back up. The bulls kind of defended the zone. We're having a little bit of a rally. We want it to go up. Do we get in? Well, let's take a look to the downside down here. Yes, the VWAP is angled up. Good. But look at that. Even, even with this moving to the upside, look at this. We're having a lot of selling pressure in this. That's what these red bars are here. It's selling pressure as the price is trying to move up. This means... The bears are defending their territory. This is why today's stream is, are the bears in control? They're trying to move up. Do you get in? Do you catch this? Because this was a deviation down and it's about to rocket. Well, look, selling pressure is saying no. VWAP is angled up. But then also right here, as this pushes up, we can see the selling pressure kind of kind of eclipses or kind of stops. It goes back to just white, these white square candles. But... We see the price action starting to come down and the uh, stochastics got relatively high. We zoom in on this. If you know how stochastics and RSI and all that work, you have a zero to 100 scale. You can think of it percentage. You can just think of zero to 100. Typically above the 70 is overbought. Below the 30 is uh, oversold or some people adjust that to 80, 20. Well, the same thing is present here. You just look over here on the right. Uh, you're going to have to, readjust how you look at some of these metrics, especially within the trend fuel, because there's so much going on. Essentially, you're looking at the stochastics here and the RSI here, stochastics orange, RSI purple. If you look to the right here, we this is a zero line. So it's just like looking at option H. Where's 100 up here? Option H. So there's, there's, your, there's your zones. There's a 20. We can do 70 and 30, option H. Let's put this to 30 right there. So this is how, you know, ignore all the other stuff. So you see stochastics got really low. Stochastics, stochastics came down here below the 30, uh, bounced here at a low, came back up. 
topped out right at the 70, overbought, came all the way back down in new lower low here. And similarly, the RSI is coming down here as well. So, looking at everything going on right now, there's still not, there's not a lot of bullishness. We're getting a little bit of a bullish signal right here based on, the, based on this quick move to the upside. We can see this right here. Uh, put my mouse over it. Um, and then we have a trend shift to the upside too, but I'm discounting this a little bit right now. And I want to say discounting, just like with any indicator set, I don't care whose it is, I don't care where it is, I don't know, care what it is. When you're looking at this stuff, each one of these individual signals is but one ingredient in the decisions that you're making when you are trading, whether you're using Market Cipher, Lu Mar Market Cipher, Lux Algo, uh, you know, Rainbow Runner, Trend Rider, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, BitLab Trading Stack. We use these signals in conjunction with all this stuff down here on the BitLab Trend Fuel because then we can, can, we can see there may be something going on in price action that's suggesting that a bullish move may come, but then you can look at the fuel for that move down here with the BitLab Trim Fuel. Where, what does the momentum say? Currently, right now, this was an attempt. There's an attempt going on, but look, all red bars here on the momentum. A lot of selling pressure, a lot of underlying selling pressure. In fact, look at this order flow that we can see right here. There's some green here and there, but it's predominantly selling pressure. So if there's predominantly selling pressure and we want this to go up, are we betting the odds in our favor? No. It looks like this is working its way over for the trend signal line, this dynamic resistance, and this uh, the 20 moving average right here, this little the, the line that's just a little bit brighter, if you can see that. Uh, looks like this is trying to come over and, and sort of maybe a small attempt up, fake out, and then uh, more, more likely than not continuation of the downside. My question is going to be, is this target going to come all the way down here and hit this? Or is this going to break down and consolidate somewhere around this golden pocket, which we know is right here? This is a golden pocket. What is the golden pocket? Let's refresh. Fibonacci from the bottom. To the top of this wick. Golden pocket right here. The point six one eight, a.k.a. 61.8%. That's what that is. Remember, zero to one. One is 100%, so 0.618, this is 61.8%. So this is 61.8% uh, you know, of the way down. This is 38.2%, that's what the 382 is. 78.6%. This is a very high hit rate for prices to retrace to, and so we want to see what happens on this move. Can we hold here, come back up, and then test this zone up here, and then what's going to happen? Well, coming over here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. Uh, we're going to look at the, another a friend of mine just sent uh, me some other indicators. I just wanted to highlight just because uh, it gives some really good da uh, data here. Looking at the uh, split volume, you can also see there's, there's, a more, there's an increase in sell volume. That's this downside volume here. Downside volume coming here. The, the buy side volume has been relatively equal. It's been dropping, small spike, but on that same spike. Look how big this sell volume was right before that, and then a smaller buy volume right after it. Interesting. Now, there's something else I wanted to show you. The liquidations. Uh, that's not what I wanted to show. I can't remember. Oh, funding rates. This is, there we go. Getting a lot, see, look at all this negative funding rates through here. Negative funding rates, everybody, there's still a lot of, this is on BitMEX, a lot of shorting funding rates here. We go to the four hour, look at this increase in negative funding rates here. Negative funding rates means more people are betting short. There is an argument to be made with the bearishness we're seeing in the markets, and I talked about this the other day. There's an argument to be made with this bearishness in the market that, we do get some sort of impulse to the upside with a quick move from short liquidations, a little bit of a short squeeze to flush out the open interest. The question is going to be, if we do get a quick move, don't jump in because it's moving quick. Jump in because we got a confirmation of a move, meaning we broke past certain levels. This is a level. This is a regional level, the 28.8, uh, 28.8 up to basically 20, 28.8 up to $30,000. This zone right here is going to be something that we're going to need to work to get through. When price comes back up, when price comes back up to the zone, 
We're going to need to work this area, probably get rejected, come down, come back. Like there's going to be a lot of work to do because of all of this uh, consolidation that we had for. Okay. Let's see. 23 days of consolidation across this zone. And then let alone, we had this consolidation up here. Come on, you damn thing. The measurement tool is the worst tool in trading view. I'm going to tell them that. I'm going to write their manager. I'm just joking, but it never works for me. Um, there we go. 23 days. Then we had, a, we, had, we had a little bit, I guess it's a little longer. Go about right there. Yeah, 20, 32 days. And then from there we had, uh, yeah, about 23 days. A lot of work to be done once we start moving back up. So let's pay attention to that. Got 110 people in the room, only 64 likes. Everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are doing a giveaway tomorrow, by the way. Make sure you're heading over to follow me right here on my Twitter page, at Kelly Kellum, and uh, make sure you're following the correct spelling, which is spelled right there, at K-E-L-O-Y, K-E-L-L-A-M. Look for the blue check, look for the hit logo. But also head over to the BitLab Academy page here, at Academy BitLab. Hit that retweet, hit that like. You'll be entered to win. We're giving away... Uh, a three-month membership to the BitLab trading stack, which is all the indicators I'm showing you, uh, which is a lot of comprehensive data on what's going on in the market. Oops, the uh, BitLab volume, which is this orange, all this the volume, uh, there we go. All this right here, along with the order blocks that come with that. You see how it auto -pop uh, propagates these order blocks, areas of interest. So we were talking about that golden pocket that's down here. Well, look at what's also in the same exact zone. There's a giant order block right here, the, uh, the 618, from this move is basically right let's go like that i had the thing drawn all wrong the order block coming down right here seems like there's going to be a, a decent level of support when we get to the zone for a number of reasons we have the uh, golden pocket which is just below us we have the order block which is also uh printing right here tends to be liquidity magnets and we have another uh order block directly below us if i if it were my guess i think we'll take a little pit stop here maybe a little rebound and then uh, if, if we get the rebound, but I do think we're going to be testing this, uh, this 786, which is at 26,391. What do you think? Do you think we're going to get down to uh, 26,364? 26, do you think it's possible? All right. Let's see what you guys are saying. Donald Massey, what's up? You're not late if you're here. You're in the right spot. By the way, anybody, if you're watching over on the Hit Network, shout out to you all there. Uh, make sure you head over to BitLab Academy's page and uh, follow us here because we go live twice a day. YouTube.com forward slash at BitLab Academy. Come join us. Join our crew. Uh, now let's go ahead and do a bunch more TA. We're not going to do a full hour today. We're going to do just a little bit shorter than that. Uh, but I do want to get through a bunch of stuff with you guys. So let's do some TA. Look at Ethereum. It gave these levels. If it broke this, if it broke this level, we said it was going to come here. It did. Lost the level. Got rejected coming down. Where's the next level? Well, the, the BitLab volume is suggesting that that order block, that green block right here, is probably a, a spot we should be watching. But let's go ahead and do, uh, let's go ahead and turn off the intelligence. Let's go ahead from the bottom here, do option F, and do our fib from the bottom to the top there. Now click again to finish the fib. We can see price action fell right through the golden pocket. Right through it. And this order block is lined up perfectly with a little bit of its support on that bounce, but also with where the right regionally where the 786 is. I do think that the uh, bit, uh, Ethereum is going to likely come down to the 786 and possibly even test down here into to the bottom side of this support, this diagonal support that we have from all the way back here in June. We can see, I do think there's an order block right here as well. If we came straight down, it would be down at 1637. I think it's, what's more likely is that it kind of work our way over. So maybe uh, somewhere over here, 1650, uh, if we are going to continue the downside action. Does it bother you? Everybody let me know in chat. Let me get, I'm going to close this poll right now. Seven. So how many hours a day do you crypto? That's what I put in the poll. Make sure you, uh, I'm going to give you 10 seconds right now to everybody. If you haven't uh, participated, put your hours in the poll. How many hours a day do you crypto, whether you're on crypto YouTube or you're actually actively reading stuff or learning about something or trading. 
let me know in the poll right now. We're going to close this out in a second. And then I'm going to have another poll for you that I want you to put in in a second, which is, uh, does it bother you when price, are you, are, you, does, are you feeling stressed right now? Are you feeling stressed right now because the price action is to the downside? Does it bother you? Well, if it does, then maybe you're out of position and let's talk about that. That's okay. Let's not be embarrassed about it. You know, my, you know how out of position I was for years? I told you about that trade I lost $70,000 on. Like a jackass. I didn't need to lose it. But you know what? Even more so, none of you all need to lose it because I'm here to tell you, I've made the mistakes. I've learned from them. I've made a living out of this after. I never was able to make a living out of this until I learned from my mistakes. And I want to be the shortcut for all of you. Again, none of this is financial advice. What it is, is me breaking down the, the major screw ups I had and the little wisdom nuggets I've picked up from other people. I can't take credit for it. I picked up wisdom nuggets from other people and I'm conveying all this grouping of different things I've learned from traditional asset traders, money managers, uh, huge, huge investment banker, uh, VCs that I know, uh, traders, investors, all these things I put together into a pot and, uh, you know, and through my own experience of trading and investing also, I've learned from this and I still make mistakes. And I want you all to know that you're always going to make mistakes. How fast do you get up and step back on the horse and figure out what you did to fall off the horse in the first place? Don't be like, damn, I fell off. I hurt my shoulder. Go, I fell off. Okay. It's time to get back on. And in the process of getting on, what do I need to do differently now? That's what this is all about. How do we do better? Not how do I do the same thing and expect something different? Come on, guys. So I'm going to ask you a poll right now. Uh, ooh, that's the wrong thing. Boom, start a poll. Um, are you frust uh, frustrated with this downward price action? Fresh started, fresh started. I can't speak. Uh, fresh, fresh rate. Ah, uh, sitting. There we go. No idea. I'm lost. Let me know your thoughts there. Now let's go ahead and do some more TA. Let's break it down, continue on. We got a couple things we want to get through here. Ethereum breaking down. We saw this order block right here, right below us. I told you the level I'm looking at there is the next stop is somewhere around the low 1700s. Uh, 1703, 17, uh, 1715, somewhere in that range. If we lose that level, I do think we're coming down into the mid 1600s. Uh, now, if we're able to hold in this zone and kind of test back up here, then we'll talk about that then. But as it stands right now, look at the trend fuel here on the bottom. The trend fuel on the bottom shows that we have a lot of selling, selling momentum. That's what all these red bars are. So this is also momentum is moving to the downside, but this is high volume selling pressure. That's why these are red. We also, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a mixed, mixed bag of goodies here with this market. Now, let's see. On the one hour, this is already looking like it's trying to make the next move. Making a little bit, but maybe what we're going to get here is a bit of a bull flag or a sideways consolidation. There's no way to tell what's going to happen here right now. Currently, the RSI is a little bit bottomed out. Let's go ahead and turn on the RSI uh, view up, stochastics. Stochastics are starting to round about. RSI is angled up. View up is angled up, but we're having a lot of selling pressure. You see how you can use different signals to either confirm or contradict the signals you're looking at. Because if I'm only looking at RSI, it says, hey, maybe things are looking up. Stochastics say, hey, maybe things are looking up, but it's not quite there yet because this is running a little slower. This is the orange line here is stochastics. VWAP is saying it's trying to make a move back towards a median sort of range, right? But still have negative money flow and we have a lot of selling pressure. So we're getting a couple mixed signals here. Sorry about that. I had to cough. <coughs> All right. Still lingering sickness from that week or two back. So, so this looks to me like it's going to do a small bit of consolidation into a tight range, which would uh, actually be something like a little bit of a bear pennant. 
It looks like it's kind of in form of, but we're going to see what happens here over the next uh, period of time. Look at, look at how, <laughs> you see, I just did that from the wick and then the two current candles. Look, this is exactly what's playing out. So if this were to play out, what does this mean? Option T gives us the trend line. We can draw, move this down, come right here. I'll do it from the inside of this just to make it a little bit more conservative. We can see, look at where this goes. I told you the next target was down near that order block and look at where that goes, right into the bottom side of this order block. A lot of people will probably front run this. Uh, they probably will wick past this, come back into the zone and then consolidate the 1680s. That's what I'm seeing on Ethereum. Now let's go ahead and move on to, uh, let's look at XRP. We did not look at it this morning. Where's my XRP? I cannot see, I cannot see. Here we go. XRP. Got a little bit of a trend line here. It's on the 24 minute though, so. It's trying to clip around, see this? But is this a buy signal? No, it does show that a momentum is starting to shift, starting to contract back towards the zero line. However, Look, it's, this is barely just flattened out. Stochastics are angled down. RSI is down low, starting to angle up, but not quite turning the curve. And we see that this is neutral or bearish, which would lead this to lean, uh, lend itself to be more bearish than, uh, than neutral or bullish, right? Because we have neutral and bearish, which means we're going to practice, we're going to focus on potential bearish side actions. Now, if we, we're on the two hour here, okay, we've got order blocks directly above us. 786, look at this, right below us. I mean, we literally bounced on this zone. Let me zoom out on this just a little bit. Let's go, go like this. We are making sure this is perfectly lined up. Now let's kind of see where the price action went. Look at that, came down, tapped, and I talked about that this morning. I was talking about, I talked about it for the last two weeks. I talked about it all the way since when this pushed up. I was telling you to watch for this golden pocket, which is right here, 0 0.618, 0 0.65. Price action came down, bounced, lost it, deviation down, broke back above it, deviation up, come down, lost it again. This losing it right here was suggesting that the, the bullish narrative was weak here and we were likely going to move down. What do we need? A catalyst. We got the catalyst. Market's starting to move down. Bitcoin starts moving down. All the uh, risk narrative for crypto markets is evaporating. So where does it come out of first? Altcoins. XRP had an exponential move right here. So what's happening is bring, having a pretty substantial sell-off here. If we see right now, if we look all the way from where this top was, option, uh, take do a little, uh, there we go. 40% drop on XRP. Somebody bought there. This wick can only get up here because somebody, somebody bought somewhere lower. Maybe they even bought higher, it doesn't matter. But somebody sold here. And for, for, for somebody to sell, there has to be a buyer. So somebody bought the hype. They're like, oh, I got to get this for you. And then all of a sudden the market goes, no, no, mother. See what I mean? This is why you got to be patient. Now this is working its way down. However, it is working its way, way down. Let me kind of point something out here. There is a, a bullish context to all this. And remember all the stuff that's going on in the news with, uh, let's do it a little bit more like that. Okay. We're going to ignore the top of this wick because that was a little bit of hype anyway. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the news right now about potential appeals. Also, is, uh, is, is the Supreme Court going to even allow the appeal? There's all this stuff. Court case of GBTC, SEC, so much going on. And if anything positive comes out of any of those sort of cases that are in regards to securities, especially with the SEC XRP case, then this will, this will finally have the full pressure released and this will likely move up very quickly. But as it stands right now, this is pushed up. This is selling off, but it is in a bit of a, uh, a falling wedge. It's a very ugly falling wedge. Why do I say that? Because typically with a falling wedge, what you want to see to make it really a confirmed falling wedge or any sort of wedge is you have a touch point here. You want this to come down and touch and form the, that, uh, the support level. So where we have this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Now we kind of have this, but not really because look, it took all the way till down here to get this. So because of that, let's go ahead and delete this line. Uh, or, or rather than delete it, we can make it very transparent so we know it's there. Uh, but we're going to do another trend line. We're going to go from right here. We're going to create this channel. Now I'm going to make this a bit brighter. So it looks more like we have a bit of a channel here. Let's actually move this. Touch. Here we go. 
And either way, funny thing about that, that was a, uh, these both kind of result in the same thing. The only difference, major difference with the falling wedge and a falling channel, falling channel can kind of go indefinitely. There's no terminal point. With the falling wedge, you can kind of see the, con the contraction of price into that apex point for which then you could predict a, a forced move either to the upside or the downside as pressure builds into that point. Now, momentum down. See this? Stochastics down. RSI down. VWAP coming up, rolling over right here, this yellow line, rolling over at the zero line. And we're getting neutral or bearish. This is on the two hour. Let's look at the one hour. VWAP angled up, stochastics rounding, RSI angled up. It does look like there's a, a small setup for a potential move here, but at the same token, things are looking rather dreary on the market right now. So if this does push up, I do think we'll get rejected in this 59, 58 to 59 zone. Uh, I think what's more likely is we push up, get a small wick if we even get that and a rejection to come down and, and likely ultimately test down here into the 50, 53.6 to 53.6 to 54 sort of zone on XRP. Now let's look at H bar. H bar had a big run. Uh, and now it's kind of kind of been struggling a little bit with the context of the market. So look at this. We got a little bit. I can't really call that a falling wedge because there's not a little. Uh, Okay, it's tried to break out. It's trying, but uh, look at this. Let's go ahead and delete this. We can see right here, one of the things we have, this is not, this is not really what we want to see if we want a bullish breakout, is what we're having right now, this is called a broadening wedge pattern. Broadening wedges, these are, this is a rising broadening wedge. When you have patterns, whether it's a channel, uh, a rising wedge, uh, a rising broadening wedge, when they're pointed up, they tend to break down. When they're pointed down, they tend to break up. Note that. Put it in your notes. Mark it down. So this is a rising broadening wedge. See this expansion? Bulls are trying. Bears say no. Bulls try harder. Bears say no harder. The bulls can't get any relief here. And now look at this. Look how much volume it took to get this up. And look how little volume it took to bring it down. That's one point for the bears. Now we're, our, let's go to the daily. Look at this on the right, the dashboard. VWAP, stochastic, RSI, uh, uh, trend wave one, wave two. These are not looking very bullish. This is finding itself right here on the, on the point of control. It's finding a little bit of support here, right on these previous lows. If we lose this zone, we lose this zone and break down, then we are, I think we're coming down to 5.6. We're not able to hold 5.5, 5.6. Then I think we're coming down to test down here into the low fives, 5.2. It's H bar. Now, if we do bounce up, we have hit the support. If we do bounce up, I don't see us on this bounce getting over this, these highs. So I do think we're going to get a little bit of a truncated. In fact, what I would see more likely than not is if we take a fib on this move, if this does basically consolidate over here uh, and move, basically have any sort of move up, I see that it's likely to start to see the pivot to the bearish narrative by not bouncing up here and getting even to previous highs, but bouncing up and getting rejected somewhere at the 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 three eight two, uh, probably somewhere around the point five. I was going to say between the three eight two and the six one eight, but somewhere in this zone right here around six four, I see is a likely opportunity. Uh, for the bears to take back over and show that the, the, that this bullish narrative is no longer because we can also see see there's a wick there's a daily wick bear said nope so I don't that's why I don't see this having another attempt back up into this zone I see this the narrative is for bears is taken over there might be a little bit of a relief before it breaks down if it doesn't just consolidate sideways from here and then break down that's what I'm seeing on H bar I mean look at this. Comes down. This is from that 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 point to the bottom. Breaks down. Comes up to the six one eight. Gets rejected. Comes up to the six uh, to the point five. Gets rejected. Comes up just over the three eight two. Gets rejected. Man, 
Funny how these charts work. 131 people in the room. Shout out to everybody in here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Join us here. I can't but not, I cannot believe we got over 50%, about 55, 56% of you that watch on the daily basis. You watch regularly. You literally watch regularly. You're not subscribed to the channel. Come on, join our community. We got good stuff going on here. Now, that's what we've we talked about H bar. Let's talk about some other stuff here. Uh, well, let me pull up that list that you guys had this morning. Uh, we did that whole list, though. So. Um, let's see. Let's look at Phantom. Yeah. These uh, order blocks right here on the BitLab volume giving us known levels uh, that we likely should be looking out for. That's right, be right below us. Uh, basically, at two cents, 206. We lose that level, which I think is likely uh, coming down to this previous low here, which is 195. And if we lose that, then we're ultimately coming down to this zone down here, which is 16. Now let's think about this real quick, everybody. Oh man, the prices are going down. I'm so mad. Oh, I just want it to go up. Shut up. Do you want your bank account? Do you want your capital? Do you want your portfolio to look incredible in the bull market? Then we're not going to have any of the whining. We're not going to be frustrated. We're not going to be stressed. We're going to look at strategy. We're going to look at the charts. We're going to look at levels and what the chart is telling us about where the opportunities lie. And then we're going to stack the indicators, whatever data that you utilize in our favor so that then we can ladder our entries down below us because yes, it sucks because the sentiment's low and the you know, crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube and engagements is down, all this. Who gives a shit? Paul, I apologize for the, for the TV that's still, uh, sorry, the language that's still okay on TV, but I know it's not family friendly. But we're talking real talk here, guys. And if we know, if we have conviction that this crypto market, the blockchain market, the, the digital assets, Bitcoin, altcoins, all these things, if we have conviction about where we think it's going, then we should be cheering for these lower prices so that we can so that we can say uh, in a year and a half, people will be like, you bought Phantom at what price? When everybody else is scared, you're buying the fear. But you don't just buy because it's dropping. You buy because you identify levels on a chart. And you say, this is, this is my opportunities. This is what's going to change my life. That's what we want to do. Now let's go ahead and do a couple more things on the charts. And we will, we got to look at BNB because it's, this sucker is dancing on the edge of no return of a, I'm talking, Ooh, this is going to hurt some feelings. Remember we talked about this gap right here, this gap. We had a one little point right here. We could do that. Uh, but this gap, look at this gap. There's no, no price to hold on to. There's no real volume levels. This, we have a little bit of interaction here. But the point being is if the price fell from where we're at right now, where, where the hell are we at right now? Right here. Okay. So right here. If we fell to this level, which is right here, that's 40% drop. If we fell to the next spot on the chart where there's price interactivity of price memory, where things might likely go, bam, it's an 80% drop. And then the question I would have is, considering where we're at in the market, and I, I hope Binance is smarter than FTX, I think they are, but is this going to cause any sort of issues with any liquidity or investments, or do, are they you know, banking on the prices not going down this far, and so they leverage, at, you know, we got to be very careful if we, this, if we see this sort of drop in BNB, because this could be a, a pretty catastrophic. It could be potentially catastrophic. For Binance, if this were to happen, depending on how they have their finances managed. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably 60-40 that they'd be okay. But remember, it's not just Binance. It's all these other people in the space. All these other institutions, all these other players. And will this put anybody in a bad situation? That's what we just want to pay attention to. But right now, we're talking about you and me. So let's talk about you and me right now. Let's get down on the one-hour chart. Zoom in over here. We drew this, I think, two days ago, two, three days ago. We had this, uh, we had this. Turn off. There we go. Off. 
So we have this triangle right here that this broke down into. And then we've had this established sort of zone. We talked about the potential. I think we talked about it about four or five days ago, somewhere over. Maybe, we talked about it about a month ago. We talked about it, I think, last week. And we've lost this level, came up, retested this level, and came down. Now let's look at where this dotted line points to. Right on the bottom side of this, this line right here. What is that line? I don't know. Let's kind of figure it out. Uh, four hour. So it's this line. Why is my... So we have reje rejection, 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 support. So we know this is a valid line. And look at where the projection of this flagpole or the, the width of this zone projects directly down into exactly where this level is, which also has uh, another low right here that intersects with this zone. I could see finance going to 181 a coin. The hope is that it holds there if it does. Look at one more coin and we can, let's go two more coins. Look at Solana. I'm not a big Solana fan, but I know a lot of people trade it. They want to make money on it. So I support you. Let's actually not even do that. This is a four hour. We got a little bit of a box here. Little bit of a box. What's in the box? All right. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, are we going to hold here? We got this clipped over. Stochastics are angled up. They're moving up relatively highly, and the price action is not moving up. So this, this suggests that there's an attempt by the bulls, but it's being suppressed by the bears, and there's no follow-through to continue moving to the upside. Furthermore, we also see that potentially a little bit of a bear flag uh, could be forming here. It's kind of unclear at the moment, but uh, a, bear, a bear pennant. And if that's going to be the case, then potentially we may see a bit of a breakout like this. Boom, move this down. And that would put us right down here in, in this area of this, uh, this liquidity in this order block down here at 20, 2066. But I honestly think if we lose this zone, price action is likely going to maybe come down to this 2066. And then likely we see these levels right here. Why did I go here? When I see the first spot that a level could be, I always look left and I look for confirmations of that's a strong spot. We see a bounce, we see a bounce, we see a rejection, we see a bounce. This is a strong line. So I see likely if we lose this level, Solana coming down, uh, stair-stepping here, a little work, and then coming down ultimately down uh, into the probably a little bit higher than this, little, like the high 18, somewhere, somewhere 1870, 1880. And then we can revisit it there. Um, what's something else? Ada, let's look at Ada. How you doing, baby Ada? Lost that line. We talked about that line yesterday. Lost the line, came up, confirmed, lost it, and we're getting new lows. Look at this split decision on what's going on. VWAP angled down while stochastics angled up. RSI angled up too, but we're also getting more dominantly bearish signals. We could tell on this dashboard on the right. Price actions come down into this liquidity zone. We're getting a little bit of a bounce, but we cannot even overtake what well, we are, kind of but we're slightly overtaking the lows here. If this cannot push up and even test this high here, this is going to work its way down. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, this is when we look down to the high, the, the mid 25s, uh, mid 25s for Cardano. But that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm feeling. Coming back over to Bitcoin before we go. Question is, we got 125 people in the room. We should have 125 likes. Everybody hit the like button right now. Hit that subscribe button. Join us here. And by the way, if you haven't yet, make sure you follow me here on, at Kelly Kellum, K-E-L-O-Y, K-E-L-L-A-M. I think the mods will share the link in, in chat. Make sure you're following at BitLab Academy. Hit that retweet. Hit that like. And if you haven't yet, check out BitLabAcademy.com, uh, which is, uh, this is a YouTube page. Uh, watch us there. But check out BitLabAcademy.com. Come over here to the courses. We've got so much different stuff breaking down how we understand to read price action, charts, formations, on chain whole on chain data analysis course, uh, trading strategies, indicators, and we've got uh, all all the indicators that I've been breaking down with you guys. Uh, we're going to be releasing these uh, the BitLab Intelligence, which is this one with all these signals, lets you know when it's bearish, when you're getting a trend shift, when you got support and resistance zones. We got the trend fuel here on the bottom with all the momentum and stochastics and RSI, and we have the dashboard here on the right for beginners. We got the BitLab Volume here, which allows you to see, uh, you know, essentially. Uh, if we, let's go to an, uh, an asset we don't normally look at, uh, but it allows you to see these order block zones that show you exactly levels 
that you could be looking at uh, for potential supports or resistances. If we zoom this out a little bit, you'll be able to see a little bit more data here. Uh, but we can see a lot of really clear signals here to really help you navigate what's going on in these markets. And that's what this is about. You can find that at bitlabacademy.com under indicators, uh, BitLab trading stack. By the way, all this information in here, right here, uh, we are uh, changing this uh, in, in the next 24 hours. This is from the, 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 the version that we just migrated out, out from. So just know when, you, when you're paying for this, uh, you will be getting uh, the current BitLab. The, the, only the new upgraded BitLab trading stack is available. Uh, and also, furthermore, if you want to sign up for all the courses, uh, you can sign up right here. I want all access. If you want the free version, you can do this. It's just the beginner stuff. I want all access. You can use Give Me 30 for 30% off uh, your first month. But you can also just sign up for the BitLab Pro right here. You get 30% off every month. Rather than paying $125, $130 or something like that, we bring it down under $100. I think it's $97. Bucks, but you get... The indicators, you get the premium Discord, you get the uh, courses, all access to the courses. So check into that. Now, coming back over to what we're looking at before we go, uh, BitLab, uh, sorry, uh, Bitcoin, we are looking scary. But when you map out the levels, when you see what's going on on the chart and you say, okay, I know what's going on. I have a plan. I see where the different levels are on this chart. I see what's going on. Let's come back over to this chart right here. Come back up to uh, right here. We see what's going on. We've lost the major level. Doesn't mean it absolutely has to go down. Remember what happened here. Everybody right here said it's going to go to 50. And then we had the deviation, a correction back down, lost the level, came back down. Everybody said we're going to, to, to 50 again. We lost the level down right now. So the same thing happens. When this drops, you're going to start seeing a lot of people say we're going down to 12. We're going down to nine. Uh, but what's most likely to happen is testing down somewhere in this somewhere in this region. Uh, uh, we're going to test down somewhere in this region right here to see where the strength of the bulls and the liquidity lies. Whether we come down and bounce on the golden pocket and then work our way back up, or come down to the seven eight six and work our way back up, or really stress people out and test this twenty five to twenty four region and get a slightly lower low here just to really trigger a bunch of liquidity before it rockets. By the way, that doesn't have to happen. This could very well come down here and scare the living hell out of everybody and get all the way down here to this 1.618, down here in this, uh, the 20 sort of zone. But I do think at the end of the day, these markets will resolve to the upside. So no matter what you do, don't trade in and out because you're scared. Trade in and out because you have a strategy and your targets and your, and your risk management and your tools and your plans are being hit the way you want them to. Now, with that being said, everybody in the room Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, be a part of our community here. We'd really love to have you. Really, we got such a wonderful community here. I'm so honored to be here with you guys every day, and I'll be seeing you all tomorrow morning. And for now, that's all I got. So I will see you all later. Adios. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in. Hit that like button, sucker.